So good morning, everybody. I want to welcome you to the April 9th, 2024 meeting of the Calvert County Board of Commissioners. At this time, I'd like to ask Pastor Kendall if he'd come forward and give us an indication. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's pray. <coughs> Our Heavenly Father, we pause now just to acknowledge that the heavens do declare your glory. As we saw yesterday with the eclipse, Lord, we were just amazed at what you were doing. And we pray that today, as the life kind of goes on, that we would continue to remember that you were sovereign above all. That's why we take this time to acknowledge you. And God, I come before you and I ask that you would bless and keep uh, this meeting, these county commissioners. God, would you let your face shine upon them, be gracious to them. Would you lift up your countenance on them and give them peace. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you, Pastor Kendall. And Pastor Kendall comes to us from the Community Baptist Church in Dunkirk. Thanks very much for coming down and joining Thank us you. today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Next item on the agenda is to approve the agenda as presented. Or are there any additions or corrections? I have none. I have none. Make a motion we approve. Second. I have a motion and a second that we approve the agenda as presented. Any discussion Sorry. on that motion? Mr. President, we, we are asking to add executive session pursuant to 3-305-B8 uh -huh. to discuss litigation. There is a amendment to the agenda. Let's make the amendment to the motion. Second. So I have a motion and a second that we add exec session to the agenda. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, a couple of public service announcements. Uh, unfortunately, we have to pass along our condolences to the Joseph Cheesy Kirby family. Um, cheesy as we all knew him by uh, passed away on April the 2nd uh, he worked for mosquito control since 1991 uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to his family and friends he was my little league coach is that right? really yeah, he was um, and we've been getting a lot of phone calls about some a tree clearing operation going on right on route 4 in Lusby, just want to let everybody know that uh, that's private property. That is not county property. That uh, that operation is permitted and completely approved by uh, all those entities, the Department of Natural Resources and Soil Conservation Service. So uh, just want to let everybody know that's a private operation and not county. Also, a uh, primary election is coming up. Um, they're going to be mailing out sample ballots and voting information starting the week of April 12th, so you have to watch your sample ballots going to arrive in the mailbox. Um, if you have any questions, you can call the County Election Board at 410-535-2214, or you can go to the website, elections at calvertcountymd.gov. Uh, the primary election is on May 14th. You see a few signs popping up. Uh, early voting is going to start on Thursday, May the 2nd, and run through Thursday, May 9th from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day at the following locations, the Community Resource Building in Prince Frederick, the Southern Community Center in Lusby, and uh, the new location for the third district is Ward Farm Park. So that's right off of Ward Road, right there in Dunkirk. Uh, that is a new location. So everybody in the north end of the county, you need to make sure you're aware of the new location. And as I said, for any more information about the primary election, you can go to www.calvertcountymd.gov slash vote. Uh, also, I just want to let everybody, know that, as, as, you, as you may already know, the legislative session wrapped up last night at midnight. Uh, we did have two pieces of county legislation that did pass. We also had uh, one piece of legislation regarding ethics that had been submitted by a citizen. That piece of legislation also passed. So this year we did very well with our legislative effort. I want to take this opportunity to thank all those that were involved. Um, uh, we had a bill for local preferences for businesses that this was our third session trying to get that bill passed. Uh, we couldn't have got that done without the support of the minority business community, the Chamber of Commerce, and all those others that testified and uh, participated in the process. So I want to thank those individuals. And uh, also I want to mention, that some of you uh, watch our meetings, you notice that uh, once in a while we recognize employees for doing outstanding work. So I'm going to take some executive privilege. 
Uh, the Thursday before Easter, we had a little legislative hiccup that got us, some of us, very excited. And uh, just want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Deputy County Administrator Linda Turner, Director Julie Oberg, and County Attorney uh, John Norris for all their extensive efforts in that legislative issue. Uh, we did prevail in that finally. And uh, just want to thank them for their efforts. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. So that concludes my public service announcements for today. That brings us to a proclamation for Autism Awareness Month. Uh, Ms. Stenamore and Commissioner Hart. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning. Morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. I forgot my readers, so forgive me. <laughs> it's going to be held like yeah, this. Yeah, I'm here. We all have this. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Christine Fenimore. I am a Calvert County employee. Um, I'm also a mom to a adult who was diagnosed with autism at the age of five. Thank you um, for recognizing Autism Awareness Month with this proclamation this morning. 2024 will mark the 12th year of recognition here in Calvert County. This is huge and we want to thank you. <clears throat> uh, just a few quick tips about autism spectrum disorder. It refers to a broad range of conditions characterized by challenges with social skills, repetitive behaviors, speech, and nonverbal communication. Diagnosing autism is difficult because there's no blood test. There's no medical test. It's screening and a doctor um, will make a diagnosis. Um, it's very subjective, and um, if screening is not available, then it can be difficult to even and find resources. Autism is often accompanied by sensory and medical issues such as gastrointestinal disorders, seizures, sleep disorders, as well as mental health challenges like anxiety, depression, attention issues, just to name a few. According to the Centers for Disease Control, autism affects an estimated 1 in 36 children, and that number varies depending on how old they are and when they were screened, that type of thing. If you've met one individual with autism, you've met exactly one individual with autism. They are all different. They have different needs. My son, NJ, is able to be here today. He's not going to talk in the microphone because you people are scary. <laughs> um, uh, but. <laughs> some folks would some folks with autism would not be able to be in this room because of some of their t you know the lights would set off some um, that type of thing early screening and intervention is important if you think your son or daughter may have um, be delayed in their development showing signs of autism or if you have other concerns, please, parents out there, talk to your pediatrician, talk to your daycare. That's how I was able to um, be guided in the right direction. Talk to your school if they're a school ager. Um, don't, you know, don't wait. It, it's hard as a parent to accept the fact that your child may need special resources. And I'm just a mom. But I knew I needed to do something because he was nonverbal at age three when other kids are talking up a storm. And now um, if you get him started talking about sports, golf in, in particular, you may not be able to shut him up. So there's that. Our school system. So me and him need to hang out during football season <laughs> so somebody at least talk to me. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, there are great resources in this county. Um, and I don't want to take up too much of your time. Visit the CDC website, Autism Speaks website. Another great resource um, who is on her way. I don't know if she's able to be here. She had, um, she's coming from north of Baltimore. And if you know anything about the traffic in Baltimore lately, um, she was stuck in the 895 tunnel for God knows how long. Her name's Shelly, and she is with a, an organization called Pathfinders for Autism. And they do wonderful work all over Maryland. Everything from first responder training with the sheriff's office um, to working with hospitals, um, doctors on how to, to handle folks that may not be able to tell them their needs. Um, we have a couple folks with, with us here today. Um, Shelly, if she makes it. Um, Joy Weir, who is with um, Calvert County Parks and Recreation, is not able to be here today. She is a supervisor of therapeutic services, and they have some great resources for families. Um, visit the Calvert County Parks and Rec website. 
Dr. Vanetta Christian is the supervisor of special education with Calvert County Public Schools. She's here and will say a few things on behalf of the school system. Joseph Cormier is with the Special Education Citizens Advisory Committee. And Mark Willis, who really needs no introduction if he chooses to say a few words. So again, thank you for your support and your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Introduce yourself. In, in the <laughs> 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 she tried setting you up. Good morning. My name is Laura Heron. I am the therapeutic recreation coordinator for Parks and Rec. Um, we do various programs for individuals with autism, children, and adults in the community to help overcome the barrier that a lot of individuals with autism have in participation in leisure activities, recreation activities. Um, so we do what we can to help bridge that barrier for them. Thank you. Come on. Good morning, Commissioners. Bob Branham, Parks and Recreation Director. I was only here to speak because Laura was intimidated and said she would not, but I think she did very well. Yes. So I would just like to thank you for acknowledging autism awareness with this proclamation. It is time for us to come together as a community to support and advocate for and accept those with autism spectrum disorder. And I was going to tout the great things that our team does in therapeutic recreation services, but Laura did that quite well. So thank you for the opportunity today. And I'm going to sit. She deserves to be in the picture without me. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Vernetta Christian. I am here and honored to represent the Special Education Department of Calvert County Public Schools. I serve as a supervisor of special education, and I am so grateful that you have continued today's proclamation. As we heard earlier in terms of the numbers that continually increase of members of our community who are diagnosed with autism, that leads us to understand that not only are community members being born each day, um, but families throughout the county are being impacted in various ways. And so proclamations like these help us to not only raise awareness, but help everyone to understand how we must um, embrace engage and increase access and opportunities for families to enjoy the same meaningful things um, of, of each member of our community, whether disabled or non-disabled. And so I am just very grateful and want to extend sincerest gratitude to every pioneer of this work, um, to every leader, advocate, mother, father, and everyone who contributes to the support love um, and everything that goes into making members of our community with autism thrive in the same ways um, as we all would like to in our lives. And so I want to say to those people today that the Special Education Department of Calvert County Public Schools um, salutes you and stands with you 100% for all that you do to give a voice to the voiceless. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I'm, I'm sorry it took me three hours to, to get no, down here. It's a little uh, tricky these days. Oh, yeah, it took, me, it took me an hour and 20 minutes just to get from Bel Air to the tunnel. Wow. So, yes, I was texting Christine, but I'm, I'm racing, I'm racing. Um, I'm Shelly McLaughlin with Pathfinders for Autism. Um, am I supposed to say what we do? Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> We're the largest autism resource center in the state, so when whether it's families or professionals need help finding a, um, a, a specialist, whether that's a neuropsych or somebody that can cut hair, um, or if they need help navigating a system, we also do workshops and trainings. So um, I manage all of the first responder training, so we teach for most of the police agencies in the state, um, plus some of the federal agencies. But we also have staff that teach for the hospitals, the school systems, uh, libraries, places of business. And then we'll bring in experts on specific topics to do workshops for families. And then we also do family fun events. So one night a year we rent out the aquarium. Another night a year we rent out the um, science center. We've got sailing on the books, a baseball game on the books. 
and everything we do is free of charge for families. Um, and we enjoy our partnerships. We can't, we cannot survive and do what we do without the partnerships. So we've partnered with the local police down here for different events and trainings. We've partnered with the school system to do workshops. We've partnered with the local CCAC to do mock traffic stops. Um, and again, with the local law enforcement. And so we greatly appreciate the, the partnerships that we have down here in Calvert County. So thank you. Thank you. So Kelly, if somebody wanted to get in touch with your organization, how would they do that? Microphone, please. Mm -hmm. So they can always go to www.pathfindersforautism.org. And all of our contact information is right there. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Joseph Cormier, and I'm the chairperson for Calvert CCAC, the Special Education Citizens Advisory Committee. I know you guys all know what I do, but for any parent of a, a child from birth to 21, if your student uh, interacts with the school system and needs special education services from an IFSP to an IEP to a 504 and all the other acronyms, we are here for you and we appreciate the partnerships that we have with the Board of Ed and the County Commissioners and all our community partners from Pathfinders for Autism to the Arc of Southern Maryland to Parents Place of Maryland. We uh, help parents connect to those resources, so we really appreciate you guys having a uh, autism proclamation and that you recognize not just through the month of April, but throughout the year, everything that we do, our kids are in the community and they need to be a part of it. So from transportation to the parks and rec to the sheriff's department, all the things that government does affects our kids. So we appreciate that you guys are cognizant of that and take that into consideration. So thank you so much for this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ashton Felton. I am the secretary for Calvert CCAC, and I am also a mother of a child with autism. And I just want to take the time to thank you for recognizing this proclamation this month and for your support of um, programs and initiatives for not just um, children and adults with autism, but all disabilities. Thank you. Thank you. So a lot has been said, and as we said, you know, we haven't really been talking about it that long, you know, 12 years. It's not a long time. And Christine, I think, said the best thing, you know, if you met one person with autism, you've met one person. And I think that's so key to understand because so many times we go, oh, well, I know about this. Oh, no, it's, it is very individualized. And we all have friends and family. And I know, like, for myself, when I first started hearing about it, I didn't understand what they were talking about because there's no physical signs, really. I mean, there's no, you know, you don't know. And, you know, and I'm a very, very close personal friend of mine that uh, we talk about it in depth, and it, it, it's challenging, you know. But like I say, I think the best thing is awareness and people understand it. And that is such a key thing. Just because you've met one person doesn't make you a pro or authority. just means you've met one person. So I want to thank everybody for being here and, and for everything that you're doing. And I have a proclamation here for you today. And it says, whereas autism spectrum disorder, ASD or autism, is the fastest growing serious developmental disability that results from a neurological disorder hindering a person's ability to communicate, respond to surroundings, effectively problem solve, form relationships with others. Autism is referred to as spectrum disorder because it characterizes in varying degrees by difficulties in social interaction, verbal, nonverbal communication, medical conditions, as well as restricted and repetitive behaviors. Autism can be associated with the intellectual disability, difficulties, motor coordination, attention with issues, mental and medical health. Whereas autism affects about one in 36 and individuals of race, creed, socioeconomic status, not only affects the person with the disorder, but also affects their families, friends, schools, and local communities. And whereas we recognize all individuals and organizations in Calvert County that provide early intervention, outreach, services, education, the importance of contributions they have made to our local community, families, and individuals affected by autism. 
Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Calvert County that the month of April 2024 be known as Autism Awareness Month in Calvert County. Be it further proclaimed that we commend all those who committed to providing early intervention, outreach, education, scientific research, and services to all those citizens, including those with developmental disabilities such as autism. We urge all citizens to join us in increasing their awareness and understanding of the autism spectrum disorders given under our hands and seal this ninth day of April 24, signed by all five commissioners. <laughs> you, you hold that a little there together. There we go. And again, for anybody listening, if you have a child or someone in family member needs any assistance, please don't hesitate to reach out to our Department of Community Resources. I'm sure they can help guide you on the right path. So, and thank all of you for joining us today. Next item on the agenda is an appointment. Deputy County Administrator Turner. Good morning, Commissioners. Linda Turner, Deputy County Administrator. Uh, today we have a reappointment and an appointment for the Calvert County Commission on for Women. Staff recommends you reappoint Catherine Marsh and appoint Brandy Curtis Richards. Following these two appointments, there will be eight vacancies following. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, I move that we reappoint Catherine Marsh and appoint Brandy Curtis Richards second. to the Commission for Women. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. So we have three items under consent today. Department of Public <coughs> Safety grant application for MDA spade neuter grant opportunity. Item two, Department of Parks and Recreation, National Fish and Wildlife Federation Foundation Coastal Resiliency Fund grant pre-proposal flag ponds living shoreline. Item three, Department of Planning and Zoning, Planning Commission bylaws amendment. Are there any objections to those items listed under consent today? None. Hearing none, the Chair would entertain a motion to adopt those items. Mr. President, make a motion to adopt and approve the consent agenda items. Second. I have a motion and a second to adopt those three items under consent today. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. And opposed? Motion carries. Just so you know, uh, when I was secretary, we started the spade and neuter grant program at MDA. <coughs> That brings us to new business. We have one item under new business today, Office of the County Administrator, Financial Sustainability Concerns. <coughs> you, Sheriff's Office Headquarters. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Good morning, morning. Commissioners. Tom, you're in charge of the paper. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Good morning, Commissioners. Mark Willis, County Administrator. Uh, to my right is uh, Sheriff Cox, uh, who is I worked with us as we've looked through this, uh, the, the presentation that you'll see here in just a minute. Tom Jones uh, is to my far right. He's the deputy director for uh, public works, but he's also that specialist within buildings and grounds to make sure that we're heading, always heading in the right direction with our analysis of all of our buildings. 
Uh, I would like to read the, the full <laughs> content of the memo because I want, there's a lot of information in here that I, I, I think the, the public will definitely be interested. I know the commissioners are, are in tune with this, but I, I think it's important to get the message out completely. With that, uh, so this is about the financial sustainability concerns uh, with the sheriff's office headquarters uh, here on Main Street or uh, on Church Street. Background, on April 9th, 2024, the Board of County Commissioners will receive a presentation here today uh, on the current status of the Sheriff's Office headquarters located at 30 Church Street, Prince Frederick, Maryland. The building constructed in 1919 originally served as the uh, county hospital, uh, marking the inception of health care services for Cover County residents. Founded by doctors Elliot Amos, Elliot Amos and Clarence Hutchins, along with uh, their brother-in-law, uh, Dr. Isaac uh, King. The hospital was a testament to their vision. In 2019, the Calvert House marked its centennial anniversary, <clears throat> honoring a century since its establishment. This 105-year-old and counting building currently serves as the headquarters for the entire Sheriff's Office. They relocated to this facility in May of 2002 uh, and have since outgrown the capacity of the organizational functionality of that building. Discussion. The county administrator has been working closely with the Deputy Director of General Services uh, with the Department of Public Works, uh, has untake, undertaken an exhaustive examination of the entirety of the county government building and facilities. Through this comprehensive review, it has been unequivocally determined uh, that the continued upkeep and escalating maintenance expenditures of this existing sheriff's office headquarters is not economically viable for the county. The building is plagued with severe structural deficiencies, including compromised flooring, heating, cooling, ventilation problems, security, evidence safekeeping concerns, non-functional operational layout, non-compliant with the American Disabilities Act standards, decentralized operations, and persistent mold or mildew infestation, and I, I will make a point here that it's, we address that as soon as we determine it. It's a problem of chasing the problem, and I'll answer any questions you may have as we go through the presentation on that particular topic. I don't want anybody to think that we see it, we leave it there. We're, we're addressing the issue. The fiscal impact is yet to be determined based on what I'm actually asking, uh, which will be at the end of the presentation. Conclusion recommendation. By taking a collaborative, uh, consultative, and financially sound approach, staff is asking, actively seeking <coughs> input direction from the Board of County Commissioners regarding the current condition and future plans for the, feasibil the facility in question, demonstrating a commitment to long-term planning and prudent allocation of resources within the county budget. Staff recommends a strategic two-step process to this effort. Number one, recognize the potential shortcomings and inadequacies in the current facility and direct staff to identify a new location for the sheriff's office. And number two, direct staff to incorporate plans for construction of a new facility for the sheriff's office into the capital improvement plan. Subject to the reading of the memo, are there any questions the board might have before I go into the presentation itself? As you can see on the, scr on the screen, it, it is a, uh, it's a nice looking building from the outside and that might be kind of a, a little bit of a, you know, disguise because it's 105 years old going on 106. And when you walk into that building, you kind of, you notice that right away. A little bit of history. The building known as the Calvert House, uh, built, constructed in 1919. Uh, it was originally the hospital. Uh, the Calvert County Sheriff's Office, like we said, has been using that building for, since 2002. When we say uh, organizational functionality, what we mean there is the Sheriff's Office doesn't just patrol the streets for, for traffic violations. The Sheriff's Office has multiple sub-agencies within it that all have very specific responsibilities that do not coordinate by design. They coordinate on their own. They're self-stabilized within the building. They have their own job missions. It's not like you get to walk down the, the, the hallways of this building and it's all laid out nice and, and properly. The functionality of this building is really torn up and, and everybody's kind of 
discombobulated throughout, and not just throughout the building, but actually throughout the county. So they have in, as you can see here, uh, multiple different uh, uh, agencies within, everything from uh, you know, the administration, judicial services, communications, patrol, evidence process, and evidence processing is an important one. And I don't have slides that lead to that, but I'll definitely talk to that. Uh, crime scene unit, uh, not to mention storage, but crime scene unit and uh, investigative records. Uh, due to the space con constraints, they have uh, satellited uh, multiple locations outside of that area, and they have them throughout the county. And that's the only way that they could house the entire uh, sheriff's office, even within the counties, to have them separately uh, located. Uh, one thing I will say is that with the, the newly additioned satellite locations that the sheriff has brought to the county, one in the southern end and one in the northern end, that is not to uh, diminish the space requirements that are necessary in this building. That's to give a, a police presence throughout the county 24 hours a day. It has nothing to do with space. It has everything to do with being on the job. Evaluation. The Department of Public Works issued a, a, a request for uh, a company to come in. That company was uh, MW Studios, which specializes in public safety architecture. They can go in and look at it, see how it's laid out, and tell us if it's good, bad, and different. Uh, and, and I think the, uh, it, the report is pretty, uh, pretty full of a lot of good information. The overall building systems, they, they reviewed 11 different functionality uh, Function, functions within the requirements of what the sheriff's office has to deal with on a, on a particular day. And I see I have a lot of support in the back room here, definitely for doing this, I think. Um, out of the 11 we'll rated... It's support or opposition. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with support until the commissioners tell me otherwise. Uh, and, and there will be time for public comment later. <laughs> out of the 11 areas that were, that were rated... Uh, eight were rated as poor and three were rated as fair. We'll go through these in the next couple slides. So uh, a, a poor rating signifies the building condition suffers from significant deficiencies in design, construction, or maintenance, exhibits notable, noticeable flaws in functionality, only complies to outdated codes and standards, uh, occupants experience discomfort, satisfaction due to daily use. And you can see to the right, I won't read them, but to the right, I mean, there's uh, eight of those 11 are listed right there, and it's pretty much everything that you would think that you would want to maintain on a regular basis, but it, we struggle to do so. The next area where we had fair ratings, uh, again, it's generally sound, but may have noticeable shortcomings. And I think we're being kind uh, when we say this. Uh, I, I personally walked through the building with uh, Sheriff's Office personnel, I looked in all the cubby holes, I walked down the hallways, and I, I can agree that these are all major areas that need uh, near-term consideration. Uh, existing conditions, this is just a single area. So the entire lower area, which we refer to as the basement, suffers from moisture and ventilation problems due to substandard waterproofing, exterior wall assemblies, and antiquated uh, underperforming mechanical systems. It's hard to provide updated and modern mechanical systems in a building that's uh, approaching its 106th birthday. So what you see, go back please, Tom. When you see that uh, moisture that's in there, that's after it's been cleaned up. I mean, they, they had to put their, uh, their storage racks in this building on rollers just so one, they could elevate it, but two, so they could roll it out of, the, out of the areas where water has actually entered the building and is just flowing across the bottom floor. So although they will mitigate something like that, they just have to go down 10 feet later on and find a new mitigation responsibility, and that's really throughout the building. <clears throat> this is important to me. I know it's important to the sheriff. This is where this particular hallway, this set of this ladder well here uh, for civilians and non-military and sheriff's office people is a stairway. But this ladder well, if you come in this door, they are bringing in uh, individuals that they have needed to detain, innocent until proven guilty, but they have to bring these individuals in through this door and move up and down these steps to get them to a place where they can actually uh, 
have them in safe conduct until further notice. Uh, I know that I would not want to, to have to bring in, uh, we don't call them prisoners, they're detainees, but regardless, they don't all come in willingly, and that is just not the way that you would handle it, in my opinion, uh, nor in the sheriff's opinion, uh, how you would normally have that operation. So this that needs to be fixed. This is an area of an existing condition where some offices actually have these literally as part of their office or as part of their office space. So when these air conditioning units, heat and air, kick on, you pretty much have to grab your cell phone or grab your laptop and go down to another part of the building so that you can continue to have your conversation because you, otherwise you just can't hear or it, or it interrupts that process. Next slide. <clears throat> so staff, we, when I say we concur with the architect's recommendation, certainly there's enough information in there that we see that, you know, it's for those of us in the room old enough to remember the old Midas commercial, you can pay me now or you can pay me later, but you're going to pay me. And, and that's what this is speaking to. It's not if we need to do this. It's how soon we place a level of urgency on it to do it now versus later. So there are recommendations in there, and we are seeking your approval today to direct staff to identify a potential new location and to incorporate plans uh, for construction of a new facility uh, into the capital improvement plan. I'm not asking today that we design it. I'm asking today that I be authorized to consider a placement appropriately within the capital improvement plan so that we can get this project moving forward. Uh, it was about almost five years ago that I met with the, at that time, Sheriff Evans who wanted it immediately put on your agenda for construction, and I talked them into a five-year wait. I'm at the end of that four-year, uh, end of the five-year, and I, I'm really seeking to uh, just get your guidance on how I may move forward with fixing this problem. With Sheriff, that commission. Do you have anything to add? Uh, I just want to thank uh, the staff up here, Mr. Willis, the administrator, uh, and Mr. Tom Jones, Mr. Cosgrove, uh, uh, taking time out of their day just to just to walk our building and see what our working conditions is like. Uh, they put a lot of time in. I just want to say thank you. Uh, when I was elected as sheriff, uh, one of my, my things was to examine uh, workplace conditions. As we all know, uh, as, as Mr. Willis said, this building is 100 years old uh, that we operate a sheriff's out of, uh, office out of. Um, and going through the state, going to other sheriff's offices, uh, we are kind of behind on that. Um, me, I'm, I'm not pressing the county of doing anything. I just wanted to show you guys what our working conditions are. Uh, we've had a couple areas where we could move to, and my goal uh, is to save the taxpayers money. Um, I've told you before, I don't need an extravagant building. Um, I would like, uh, we, like you said, we're spread out to different areas, uh, from K-9 to uh, our detectives, uh, to have one location to put them in. And at the same time, that, that opens up space and that opens up uh, properties for the county too as well, uh, putting us all in one place uh, that we can operate out of. Uh, my goal as the sheriff and my responsibility is the safekeeping of property. Um, and, I, and I take, uh, you know, it's a big responsibility to have when we see somebody's property, as you can see, as the water's coming in, uh, stuff like that. And, and you're holding somebody's firearms or somebody's possessions, and, and you know, uh, we got to put them on racks on wheels to get them out of the water. So um, evidence for court, I mean, that's, a, that's a big deal, too. So in our basement, we keep evidence of, uh, for court there. So means the sheriff's responsibility is for that. And I don't want to lose a case uh, that we have going forward in court because the, you know, the basement floods. Um, the security for the buildings also too. Um, the deputies really have no secured area to go to. So anybody from that subway over there can walk up on that back deck and, and pretty much do anything they, they, they can do to anybody that comes inside that building. So, and my job too also is to keep the, the detainees as you said, um, safe as well. You know, that's my job and keeping those secure and having a secured building is my responsibility. Um, a lot of times I know Mr. Uh, Commissioner Islands worked there. He knows the condition of that building as we had the mold problems there before. Uh, we can't put weight on the third floor um, because they said it's construction of the, the, the top third floor can't hold any weight. Um, so just dive into some of the problems that we do have. And, you know, just I just thank you taking this time to hear some of the issues that we do have with that building. 
Is your evidence room laid <coughs> out that it accommodates all of the evidence that comes into you? Is it secure? Or you just don't have enough space to make everything as secure as you would like? Yeah, so the space is running very thin, as you see, as we've grown since we took over the building in 2002, I think that was the year. Uh, how many deputies have we got? How many people have, have entered our county? How many people live here? But we do hold everybody's evidence inside that basement. Um, if you would come, you can come look at it. We have gun racks all around that building, uh, inside the, uh, that basement, trying to keep people's uh, evidence. And we have the case numbers actually plastered on the on the drywall of wh whose weapons and whose property that belongs to. So uh, the space is very running is really thin down there, and uh, the ventilation part of it too is we house uh, different things in there. As evidence, um, if we get a big seizure or a big bust, you can smell it through the entire building. Um, so the ventilation is bad, and I, you know, I actually feel uh, that, that the people that we have in our evidence and custodial of evidence uh, inside of our room, uh, it's not poor ventilation in there, and I would hate, you know, they breathe that stuff in every day, so. Uh, and there's no windows down in that thing either, where you could pop a window open or everything is secured in that building. When I have been in there, you all seem to be on top of each other. I mean, everything is jammed in there. Um, I have thought that there is a critical need to get you all um, more a better space for you, uh, more efficient, more secure, uh, that can accommodate the evidence, uh, better evidence room, better security for the people who work in there. But really, with the mold issue, with the spongy floors, it is, a, it is not only a health hazard, for your employees, it is, um, it's a facility that is just waiting for an accident to happen. Someone go through the floor, you know? Yeah, we have one spot upstairs labeled soft spot, don't step there. Wow, <laughs> That's wow, okay, yeah. thank you. So Mr. Jones, do you have anything to add? Um, no, sir, I mean, it's a 20, 21,000 square foot building. We're averaging about 184 service tickets a year in that building. The, uh, the electric's running right around $2,500 a month as far as the average. Um, I know when my staff goes in there, you know, we talk about the mold and the ventilation. To me, that's the biggest issue. Um, the system that they actually have in there is called the uh, Unico system, which is, if you can picture it, most ductwork has like square boxes. You know, the minimum size is 12 by 12, and then they range based on the size of the building. That Unico system is a two inch line that's cut through all the floor joists, and all the floor joists in that building, are, uh, it's uncut lumber. It's not like engineered, nice lumber where you can get in there and it's got drywall ceilings in it, so it's a nightmare to, to work with. So that Unico system really, in my opinion, and uh, some of my guys that I talk to, uh, mechanics, it, it restricts the flow and the air to be able to do what you need to actually ventilate that building properly. Has anybody kicked the tires on what size proper facility? Because, I mean, like say 21,000 square feet is not very big, um, but we know every square foot you go, the meter's running. Do we have a... So my, my master plan, I'm sorry, okay. but uh, the district's um, north-south um, takes away from the big giant building that, that you see out there that other counties are building. Um, I, I told, you know, uh, the administrator and some of uh, the commissioners that I don't, I don't need that. I uh, just need a proper operating building. That's all I'm asking for uh, in the near future. I mean, and about the same size that you're in now? Uh, so I think the, the architect recommended 75,000 square feet is the, to house everybody. Uh, going back to our crime scene techs, so we don't have an area for them to operate. So if we get a car, we need to to uh, process um, that a crime ha occurred. We cannot do that. So that so a real police station does have bays where they can operate out of. We can hold evidence till we get a search warrant, uh, so we can search a car if we if need be. But uh, that all ties into that 7,500 of having their canines uh, facility there in, in one location that that'll free us up to records. I mean. You're talking about space too. Well, we have boxes from the '60s, you know, uh, and holding case files that we need to hold for, you know, for life that we need to uh, to uh, secure. Because there's no, there's no doubt that I mean that the building the building is doesn't owe us a thing as they used to say. You know, I mean, it's given you all it's got. It it needs to go and not, and if things were free, we'd have already built it. So you know, it's that's why I ask. It's going to be what size, how much. Commissioner, I think, uh, you know, what we're trying to do today is, is really obtain authorization to move forward with a cattle improvement program, a project itself. 
once we do that, the sheriff's office has worked with us diligently uh, with their, their, their very concept layout. So we know roughly the amount of square footage, but it'll be more of a compound instead of one big building. For example, they will be pulling in, say, the K-9 unit, for example. Instead of it being down Brooms Island, it'll be on this site. But the site is big enough to, to tuck it back into a corner. Uh, it'll have its own building, but it's not a Taj Mahal building. It's a building suited for K-9 And operations. where do you see this at? Excuse Potentially, me, where would you locate all this? Well, it's all on site. So I'll stay It's all okay. on site, okay. yes. It's so uh, all those other areas that are currently being used would te theoretically become vacant for the county to do something else with those properties. But there are basically four buildings on the site, and there may be a shed here, a shed there, but four main buildings, a fleet maintenance building uh, dedicated to the sheriff's office, a canine building dedicated to canine storage and canine training, a, a building dedicated for uh, evidence room, not only storage, uh, but also if you, if you bring a car in, you're going to be able to bring it into a safe chain of custody type location where you never lose that evidence change and, because it's going to go to a court of law at some point. So that would be a, its own building as well. And then you'd have the main headquarters building that would get renovated and added to. So once we get into the detail work, if authorized today, I'll bring that back to you after, you know, sitting down with the sheriff's office and an architect and we're going to figure out what we need. But we don't, we don't truly have the actual numbers today. So this, this is undoubtedly a, a need and not a want. Um, mm -hmm. the sheriff's office for, for years, I think the day we moved into that building in 2002, we were at capacity at that point in time. The property room has been touched on a lot. Until you've seen it, you couldn't appreciate it, uh, how bad things actually are down there. Property has to be held. Say in a murder case, if somebody gets a life sentence, that property is held in the sheriff's office until that person that got that life sentence dies. It could be 40, 50, 60 Great. years. Wow. That property actually has to be held in that property room. Uh, we purchased a property room several years ago when I was in charge of criminal investigations, and I forget how many tons of property we actually took out just to make room so that we could retain what we had to retain. Um, it's constantly being purged. He has a property room manager and assistant that are phenomenal or second and none. So not only are there health and safety concerns, um, property concerns, liability issues, um, but like I said, the, the evidence is huge. It really is. I mean, Mr. Harvey sit, sitting in the back here, and I mean, he could stress on that how important it is as well. Again, I think it's definitely a want, I mean, definitely a need and not a want in this case. Um, so I, uh, that's my two cents on it. Go ahead, Mike. So just to clarify, uh, all known issues for the mold and uh, mildew, we have mitigated and taken care of all known yes, issues. Sir. The biggest challenge with that building is that, you know, we go through and find out we have a mold issue or a mildew issue. We go and we, you know, we take care of it and we resolve it. And then the next rain comes through and now today it's not only the second floor, it's down in the basement on the left-hand side. And then we, you know, mediate that. Then, you know, a couple more rains, next thing you know, it's, you know, it's at the front door. So the building is just... It's, it breathes, and when it leaks, it just, it's like chasing, chasing the wind. It's been reoccurring for years. And, yeah. the new, yes. and, and the new facility, we will bring our detectives from Stafford Road and all services to one point. Uh, yes, Commissioner, that is the goal. Uh, and me as the sheriff, I would like to have everybody at one site. If, and that's the, the goal of this plan is to pull everybody to that site. Um, and then me the sheriff that frees up a lot of buildings and space for the county to use or, or sell or, or whatnot I'd, right so it's again saving saving some county the money too as well and the taxpayers that live here and what was the overall rating of mw studios overall rating of the facility the rating in the documentation that i have over to my right it's a of the 11 categories eight were Poor and three were fair. So for me, that's poor. To me, an overall rating was listed as poor. And I mean, if you walk through, and I, I know the commissioners have been through the building, but you know, I, I have, a, a, look, aside from where someone has to sit in a chair, that's one thing to do their job. But when you're taking evidence off of the street, and one, you're defending the county's stance on what they're doing, but the other side is you're defending the potential person where the evidence is representing. Right now, if I have a leak in that room, there's no room to push that stuff out of the way to even get to fix the leak. I mean, it's just packed. I had to walk sideways through. Now, in fairness to the sheriff's office, you could name a case, and they know where it is. Absolutely. But that's because they're living in that room. 
24 hours a day. I mean, they, they know where it is. That, that's not the point. The point is, is uh, be good custodials of, and the citizens may not know this. I know the sheriff's office individuals do. The chain of custody of evidence, if, it, if you lose that chain of custody, you could lose your court case. Mm -hmm. And we've got, we've got evidence that is basically tucked into cubby holes. They know where it is, but be I be careful I what you say. <laughs> be careful what you say. <laughs> yes. State's attorney's about to have a heart attack. Yeah. Well, he's on our side. The chain of custody is proper. And chain of custody. We got it handled, but we need more space. Thank Any you. other questions? And the big thing for me as a sheriff too is the the, uh, the training portion of it. Our training room is an eight by ten room. Uh, we have the finest instructors uh, in the state, I believe. That t and we have one instructor that's getting, he's up for the uh, the national instructor of the year. Uh, so we we bring other agencies in uh, to train too as well. Very limited space to do that. Uh, there's a lot of times we try to use Island Creek, and I think that's another hundred year old building uh, that we operate out of. But uh, but I just I just thanks for your time. I appreciate you listening uh, to me, the sheriff. Uh, just trying to make working conditions better for their, all my employees. Uh, we are an operation that operates 24 hours, seven days a week. So um, I just want to say thank you for supporting me and uh, just thank you for your time for, for listening. Administrator Willis, thank you for, for all the time that you put into this. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Ready for motion? Action. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. President. In light of the inadequacies of the current facility, I move that we direct staff to identify a new location for the sheriff's office headquarters and incorporate its construction into our CIP. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank, Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <clears throat> that it brings us to public comment mr county attorney thank you is there anyone in the room for public comment so the board of county commissioners adopted a resolution in 1989 intending to maintain the order and decorum of the governmental process a copy is found here to my right persons are welcome to address the board of county commissioners on any matter germane to the business of the county government those addressing the board shall be shall not be uncivil rude vulgar profane or otherwise disruptive to the conduct of the board's business all speakers are asked to identify themselves and whether speaking as an individual where you'll be allocated two minutes or as the appointed spokesperson of a group where you'll be allocated five. Hi, Commissioners. Happy Autism Awareness Month. This is Callum, and my name is Danielle, and I'm a resident of Huntingtown. And I wanted to come and talk to you on behalf of Callum, my family, and other families like ours who receive services from the Infants and Toddlers program here in Calvert County. This program provides crucial early intervention services for children with developmental delays and disabilities, and its loss would have a significant adverse impact on the well-being of kiddos like mine. In 2002, Callum, in 2021, I know, Callum was born 33 weeks premature with a congenital heart defect. He spent most of his first year of life in and out of hospitals, and he had open heart surgery at six months old. Babies born premature are 35% more likely to have developmental and speech delays, and 50% of babies born with a congenital heart defect require special needs and education services. But the earliest possible intervention improves outcomes for children like Callum. Our primary pediatrician wasted no time in handing me a pamphlet for the Infants and Toddlers program, and I enrolled him the very same day. This program provided Callum with physical therapy services while he was on sternal restrictions after open heart surgery. This physical therapist helped him learn to roll over, stand, and walk, things that he had a lot of trouble doing and that we weren't sure how his parents to address on our own. To this day, Callum is a running wild two-year-old, but his expressive language is still a large work in progress. And Callum's speech educator at Infants and Toddlers has taught him ways to communicate with us that we never thought possible. He's signing to all of you right now. <laughs> <laughs> the Infants and Toddlers program puts on weekly play groups, story times, parent and me groups, and so much holiday fun all year round. They provide testing, evaluation, translating services, and support that extends to the entire family. 
Many families of special needs children in Calvert County love the support that it provides. And it is important that we remember that when we're talking about our county's educators, we remember all of them. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Joseph Cormier, and I'll be speaking on behalf of the Special Education Citizens Advisory Committee this morning. Uh, again, I want to thank you for having the autism proclamation this morning. And as my uh, predecessor spoke, Emerson Toddlers is a critical part of uh, the county system. It, it handles all children, birth to three. It handles children uh, before they're born when they're uh, referred from DSS or the health department for uh, prenatal situations and uh, exposure to trauma or, or drug abuse. and. It's an 11-month program run 12 months a year. And right now, the funding situation, this county's talking about moving a lot of 11-month positions to 10-month positions. We can't run a 12-month program off of 10-month positions. We need physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech pathologists, social workers, and our teacher specialists to be screening these children as soon as possible and effectively as possible to get them the services they need. The earliest interventions are the most effective. If we can get services to children birth to three and three to five in the infants and toddlers and the child find program, they're better prepared when they enter kindergarten for all of our students uh, to be around and to work with and it's, it's a huge web of uh, county services between the health department, DSS, uh, the Judy Centers, the Hippie, the home instruction for parents of preschool years, the Calvert Library, the Parks and Rec Department. We need all of these things working together to support these children at the earliest stages to get the most impact in. So I hope that we will continue to look for effective ways to budget at the county level and at the school system level to identify overlaps and make sure that we're connecting those to use our money the most effectively. We, we need more staff, not less, is the short answer. And I know you, we always say that the, the cost of school keeps getting more and more expensive. 50 years ago, our kids were told, you're uneducatable, keep them at home. There's nothing we can do for you. Now we're bringing these kids in to get them services. We have homeschool kids who used to get drive-through services for speech and OT and PT, we don't have enough providers to fully service what we have that we're obligated to do. So these homeschool kids who aren't part of the school system are no longer receiving services. And there aren't enough private providers in Southern Maryland that parents are driving to Baltimore or PG or DC to get these services. And that's money we're, we're sending out of county. So I hope that you will work with the school system, the College of Southern Maryland, to work on the pipeline so that we get students here in the county to want to be in special education in whatever realm and then come back and work here in the county and serve in the county. It's so important. Uh, I do want to touch on the CCAC awards that we're going to have April 17th. We had 125 nominations for over 200 staff. We've got two SROs nominated this year. We've got two health department uh, employees nominated this year. Uh, we've got a, a huge announcement for our work-based learning program this year, so I hope that uh, you'll come and uh, send out your representatives, and it's going to be shared on the Calvert County YouTube channel. Again, uh, we always look for your partnership. We appreciate your uh, just everything that you do here uh, for the county, for our students, for our community. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? And there is no one online. So for those of you watching, you may not know, but Callum has a friend in the audience, and they've been here for our entire meeting, and they've been outstanding. <laughs> we have adults come to our meeting and haven't been as well behaved as <laughs> these young people. So I want to thank you for that. So that brings us to Commissioner Reports. Commissioner Cox. Thank you, uh, President Hans. Uh, please keep in your prayers the Rao family. Uh, loss of a loved one this week, and also to Nevin's family that lost a loved one this week. And this Saturday night, I had the pleasure of uh, attending the Huntingtown Firehouse Banquet with President Hans and Vice President Grasso, and it was just uh, nice to see the range of volunteers that we have in Huntingtown and throughout the county, uh, ranging from the rookies up there all the way to uh, Mike Wells, 50 years of service. And I just want to say thank you to all the volunteers that we have out there working this county each and every day. Thank you. 
Commissioner Arnold? I have nothing to report. Oh. Commissioner Hart? Thank you, Mr. President. So I'm going to try not to be long-winded. I know time is, is um, always in essence. So very soon we're going to talk budget even more and more and more. And I just want to try to bring a little history back. You know, we're a society where we're looking for blame. And there's obviously a challenge this year that we've seen with the shortage to the school system that I've never seen going on my 10th budget. There's no one to blame on this. Um, now, you could blame the governor, potentially. It's where I, my understanding is it's what, where the shortage came from. But to look into well, who dropped the ball, you know, what happened, you know, and um, there is a little bit of sentiment, and I heard it more over the weekend, that, that basically we're making it, it's a, it's a school issue, not our issue. Well, they're all our issues. I don't think anybody's trying to walk away from any responsibility. They're all our kids. They're all our issues. We know what we're charged with to do. Sometimes the challenge is a little more than normal, so, but I just want to give you a little quick history, and please don't persecute me on times and dates. But roughly, I did a little, I did a little uh, research this week and talked to some people that were around in 2011. And pretty much, when this project wasn't welcomed and it was approached here, it was a take-it-or-leave-it project. Now, you can watch movies and think like... Uh, Tom Cruise is going to be the attorney and put Jack Nicholson on stand. It doesn't work that way. You know, in, 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 in negotiations, there's the person with leverage and there's the person with not. And Calvert County didn't have any leverage, but they had a choice they could make. You could take the, the deal or not take the deal. Now, we have a roughly 33,000 homes. We're one of the smallest jurisdictions in the state. There's not a lot of revenue that comes out of that. Now, I know we all feel at home, you know, hey, my taxes, my taxes, and, and absolutely, but when you look on the big scale, when things cost millions and millions of dollars, where do you generate that from? Well, the nuclear plant's been a great partner and helped our school systems and everything. So when that Board of County Commissioners was approached with this project, there was a lot of people saying this was another opportunity like the nuke plant. And in some ways... You could, you could make that coalition, but I'm going to try to speed through this as much as I can. And there's a reason I, that I'm getting to. Those commissioners were, like, say, given with the Take It or Leave It project. And when I came on the board, and I doubt you can see this, and this isn't made available, but roughly there was a timeline of the pilot of what you would receive, pretty much to the penny. That was an influx of money that the county needed. Now, now, why was the county in the situation it was? Well, expenses keep going up. No steps in colas have been done for five years. Imagine going to work every day with no chance of making any more money. Talk about trying to recruit teachers, recruit law enforcement, recruit anybody. How do you do that when you know you're going to a jurisdiction that whatever you walk in and make, that's what you're going to make? So we were falling behind. There are required things like an OPEB account that you must fund, and that's called other post-employee benefits. You must fund it. Well, we weren't doing that. It requires millions and millions of dollars. Our ambulances didn't have the equipment it needed. We knew eventually we were going to be putting paid people out there for emergency services. Where do you generate this from? You couldn't raise taxes, and that's a fact by law. You couldn't raise taxes to hit these numbers. You couldn't do it. There's not by law, there's, you can't increase it to that level. So what do you do? So when, when Dominion was brought in, and there was a lot of problems with it like anything else, but it was brought in purely financial. And make no mistake, that's the only reason it was brought in, was to fund what the problems we knew that was coming. No one dreamed that there would be this ma wealth management formula or what have you put in because it wasn't there at the time. So it would be like say, going to our sheriff and going, how come you didn't put in a defense system to kill Martians when they invade? This was not even on the table. So for, to expect a prior board to know about something that wasn't even on the board is, is, is preposterous. These three new members have no, they, were, they, they weren't even in the zip code when this was done. Commissioner Hance 
wasn't there. When he came on, we had just got the check a couple years previous. When I came on, there was no check. We were waiting. So this was all new. There's not another jurisdiction in the state of Maryland that we could even go to and say, hey, how did it roll out? Give us some examples. Give us some information here. Give us some guidance. What, what should we expect going forward? It hadn't been done. So you're going to hear, well, who was it watching this? You should have known. You, you can't know something that wasn't even invented yet. All you have to do is turn on the news and look at the federal government broke and the state and all these shortfalls and know that they're going everywhere. But the question you have to ask, 24 jurisdictions, you went after two, shorted St. Mary's for 24000 which in our world's like you finding five bucks in the dryer. It's insignificant. But $22 million to pull from a school system. Wow. In a year that blueprint, the largest unfunded mandate ever come down the pike. Let's not forget that highway user fees were taken from Calvert County, which was almost $5 million a year. Let's not forget the teacher pension shift that was almost $5 million. That's $10 million of your money, Calvert County, your money that used to stay here that went to the state general fund. And it wasn't replaced with anything. And then have the audacity and go, well, you're wealthy. You can't afford it. You got this. We got this because we were in debt. When I got here, we were bleeding $8 million a year. And I've told you time and time again, I didn't have the guts to raise your taxes. I didn't know the budget on that level to do it. You're going to see in a couple years, as always, we're going to have an election and people are going to go, oh, I do budgets. Stop it already. Stop it. Everything is different and it takes time to learn. It takes years to learn that budget. Every jurisdiction is different. It takes years. You have lots of people with institutional knowledge. They retire, they go in and out. It takes years to do this. So to think that it, there's a quick fix, it's not. I'll tell you even deeper. We don't generate money except for taxes and grants and things of that nature. So we borrow money to do projects, to do schools, to do this. Well, almost everybody out here has borrowed money for something. Whether you borrowed money from your parents or what have you. Well, when we borrow money, we have to go to, which is like a bank. We go to the bond raiders. They go through our stuff with a fine tooth comb. I've been part of, we've gone most, almost every year of my 10 years. Not every year, but most of it. And they go through our budget with a fine tooth comb. And not one time. Was there a whisper going, you know, we would put our name on you. We would guarantee you guys. But, you know, you're about to lose some money here because when this money management formula is put through, they're going to take money from you. How did they not see it? That's what they do every day. They forecast, are you a safe bet? Are you good? And why I bring all this up is because we're going to hear you're walking away and not. We understand this problem that's coming. We do. It's probably not going to get addressed to the way everybody likes it. But I've seen COVID. I've seen all these things. It's a problem that will get solved. It will. And, you know, Calvert County will, will continue to move on. And, and, and I have been very outspoken against raising taxes. If I raised taxes, every budget hearing that it came, I would have raised it ten times. Because that's the go-to. It's, hey, let's just raise taxes. Sometimes you just can't. Now, maybe that will happen. I don't know. Will it happen on this board? I, I don't know. I can't answer that. But you don't raise taxes till you've exercised every single thing you can. You do all the work. You do everything you can. This board has lived within its means. Something I'm going to give Commissioner Hans when he came on and we talked CIP today, he looked at that and he said, you know, we got to come up with a bar. We don't exceed this. And that was a big thing of his on my last board, and it really put it into focus. You know, my first board, we did the um, funding formula for education, and these guidelines are very good. The reason that the funding formula stopped existing because we didn't know what to prepare for Blueprint. We're still getting information on Blueprint. So all we have is ourselves. That's it. 
So the, I just trying to dispel some of the anger and frustration. I get it. We're frustrated too. We want our kids to have the best. We want them to have every service that they need to be successful in life. But there's going to be some growing pains on this one. I don't want to lie to anybody, and, and I'm just asking for a little bit of patience. Um, I think we've proven the will to do it, you know. Um, we have identified salaries and positions. People forget, I believe, close to 50 teachers were let go, I think, my second year. Nobody has an appetite to do things like that, you know. Um, so I know this was long, and I'm sorry, but um, we forget how fast, you know. I've heard people say, why did Dominion even come here? <laughs> you would be moving if it didn't. And look, it's in my neighborhood. I can tell you most of my neighbors hate it, okay. It's always light there. It's noisy at times. There's smell at times. Most of the county don't even know it's there because it's back on a single lane road. There's a lot of not in my backyard. So there's a lot of people benefit from that facility and don't have to deal with any of it at all. But if you live right down next to it, sometimes it's a problem. So, like I say, once again, I'm, I apologize for, for so long, but I just thought you needed to hear some of that. So, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hart. Commissioner Grasso. Thank you, Commissioner Hart. On the 5th of April, I attended the Twin Beach Players' 25th anniversary and was pleasantly surprised. They were having a play that night, the Big 5-0, so I stayed for that. Um, along with Commissioner Cox and Commissioner Hans, I did attend the Huntington Volunteer Fire Department banquet. It was very well done, and I don't know if it's because I'm getting older, Commissioner Cox, but they they seem very young to me. I was I was really encouraged that we're getting new volunteers. It it was great, and um, for a deputy administrator, the county commissioners want to wish you a happy birthday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> That's all I have. So as was mentioned, I attended the Huntington Volunteer Fire Department banquet Saturday night, and the top runner last year had 750 calls. Wow. That's, wow. that's two a day, every day, all year long on average. And just I always remind people that when you pick up that phone and dial 911, if a fire truck shows up, that's a volunteer. That's somebody that gave up their time to be trained to show up at your door when you were in need. I uh, can't say that about ambulances anymore, but probably 50% of the time when an ambulance shows up, there's a volunteer in that ambulance providing you a service. So we take them for granted, I, and uh, we take, have to take a moment to thank them and appreciate them for the service that they provide to all of you. But uh, one year they had a volunteer. My third year, I think they had a volunteer up there that had, he had like 1,800 calls that year. Mm -hmm. He wow. lived at the firehouse, had no life apparently. But, um, <laughs> young person. I talked to him Saturday night, yes. He's a young person now. Yeah. He's a paid fireman in Washington County, so uh, he oh, doesn't wow. have time to run as many calls, but he still had, he still had over 400, I think, if I remember right. He was in the top 10. So uh, again, I want to thank the volunteers of Huntington Firehouse for inviting us up for their banquet and uh, for the service that they provide to the community. Uh, next meeting, we'll have a motion to limit the commissioner report's time. <laughs> <laughs> you ready for a motion? Okay. I move to recess to executive session pursuant to general provisions, article sections 3-305B, 1I, to discuss personnel matters related to appointees, employees, or officials over whom the board has jurisdiction and eight, to consult about pending litigation. Second. I have a motion and second that we move into executive session. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Everyone Thank have you. a great day. Thank you. Thank you.